And we're going to continue our study on Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. If you've got a copy of the Scriptures, you might open up there. And if you don't have a copy of the Scriptures, I'm sure it'll be up there. Now last week we looked at Bartimaeus and we saw Bartimaeus was blind. Bartimaeus couldn't see. He was born, he, he was blind. Uh, Matthew's account tells us about two blind people. This same account in Jericho. But Mark focused in on Bartimaeus led of the Spirit of God to focus on Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus literally means son of Timaeus. Timaeus is a Latin name, a Roman name. It means to honor. It, it indicates that this, this Jewish fellow, his family, his father, his grandfather, somewhere along the line, they bought into this Roman worldview and they turned their back upon uh, 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 the, the children of Israel and that way of life. And they bought into this thing, uh, of this, this, this new thing, you know, this new thing. And, they, uh, uh, so they, uh, uh, and so they started naming their kids. Instead of naming them David and Joshua and Nathan and Nathaniel and, and Micah and Malachi and, and uh, you know, th- those names, they started using these names that were godless, that had nothing to do with the true and living God. It just said to honor. And of course, in a Roman worldview, the one you honored, the one you worshipped was Caesar, the emperor. You see? And that's, 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 that's a complete antithesis of how a Hebrew, a Jew, should look at the world. And might I add, so should a Christian. We need to look at the world through the eyes of Christ and not through the eyes of this, this secular humanist uh, worldview that's been thrust upon us uh, throughout the 20th century and into the 21st century. We need to have the mind of Christ and look through the eyes of Christ. Well, here's blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. He, had owned, he, he was known as, as blind Bart, you know? He, he, he couldn't... He, uh, he, all he could do was take. He was a beggar. Had nothing to give. All you do is take. We learned last week that God wants us to be receivers, so, wants us to be givers so we can be receivers. You give, you receive, you abound. If all you do is take, that's all you'll ever do and you'll never have enough. You'll never be satisfied. And this is how Bartimaeus found himself. And then he got news that Jesus was passing by. Last time through Jericho. I'm telling you, the Jerusalem Express was coming through. He's at the station, and buddy, he'd better get on board. Because this, this holy train is not coming back through here again. Jesus is passing through. He's gone up to Jerusalem for the triumphal in- entry, Palm Sunday. And then we know what happens. He's crucified, nailed to a Roman cross. I'm buried. But bless God, Resurrection Sunday's coming. Hallelujah. So here he is. He couldn't see. He couldn't see, but he heard. Did you hear what I'm saying? There's people out there that can't see spiritually. But oh, God's giving them an ear. What are you telling them? Are you telling them? Are you pointing them to Jesus? Are you pointing them to the Lamb of God? Are you pointing them to the the truth of the Word that God loves everybody and He'll forgive people of their sin if if they're just honest and humble enough to repent of their sin and put their faith and trust in their resurrected Savior? They're listening. They're wanting to know. They're they're wanting to hear the truth. I'm telling you, hell has everything out there that'll lie to them. Oh, drink this. Take this. Lay with this woman or lay with this man. Or, or, you know, I mean, heterosexual, homosexual. you, You name it. It's out there. It's absolutely out there. Get drunk, get high, get, get, get just crazy. It's out there. And dear friends, I want to encourage you that the world's listening and we've got the truth. And, and the cults, the Mormons, the Jehovah Witness, all, all, all this nonsense, all this craziness out there. I'm telling you, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through Him.
There's no denomination that has a monopoly on God. I know there's denominations out there that say, well, if you're not one of us, you're not going. I got news for you. If, if God is, is so small, He fits in your little box, I don't want nothing to do with your God. Listen, my God says, whosoever will may come. Amen? Whosoever will may come. And, and you've got to be in Christ. Now, the, the, the exclusivity of the situation is you can only go through Jesus to get to the Father. You can only go through Jesus. It's not through the Baptist church, the Methodist church, the Presbyterian church, the Catholic church, the Orthodox church. It's through Jesus. Through Him and Him alone. Blind Bart, boy, he just he, he couldn't see, but boy, he could hear. And he heard the great testimonies of, of the signs and miracles and wonders that Jesus performed to authenticate his Messiahship. It was to authenticate that his message was true, that he is the sinless Son of God, the virgin-born one. And boy, something started stirring in his heart. Do you realize God has given everyone a measure of faith? Everyone has a measure of faith. Listen, everyone can believe. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And that's why we must proclaim the Word. It will activate that faith. It will energize that faith. It will make thirsty and hungry those things. I'm tell you, I still get... Uh, I, got, I got... While we were worshiping, I was getting instant message, messages from people overseas asking me, what is your website? We want to watch live stream. Right now, I mean, it's going to Pakistan. It's going all over Africa and India. It's going, this message is going around the world. And why is that? Because we're telling people about Jesus. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father except through Him. I'm telling you, the world wants to know. Oh, God, help us. Bartimaeus heard he heard the talk. He heard the testimony. He heard, and, and I'm telling you, the Spirit of God undoubtedly was drawing, activating his faith. And he, cli he cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Listen, there's only one Son of David. That's the Messiah of Israel. He is the promised one. He is the one that Isaiah spoke of. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Now you know and I know that it don't work that way with us, but it'll work that way with God. Only God can do those things. To impregnate a woman and she still remain pure and undefiled in any way and, 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 and give birth, give birth to a son who is God. That's amazing. That's amazing. And so he cried out, he's a Jericho. You know, Jericho's a great place to start again. That's what the children of Israel did. When Joshua brought them across, they came to Jericho. They was beginning their next phase of their ministry. They came out of Egypt, and for 40 years, they, they did the yard crawl. I know you get it. Some of you wouldn't. And they just went around and around and around and around and around until that whole generation died out except two, Joshua and Caleb, the two spies that brought back the faith-filled report, not the fear-filled, faithless report of the other ten. And they went in. Next phase, boy, starting again. Hallelujah. We come out of Israel. I mean, kind of Egypt 40 years ago. Now we're going into the promised land. Let's go into the promised land. Let's go in. And listen, the promised land's here and now. There's battles to fight. There's victories to win. Listen, when, it, when we get to heaven, there's nothing to fight. But we've got some things to fight now. We've got to stand against evil and wrong and wickedness in high places. Everywhere you find it. We've got to stand up. We've got to speak out. We've got to vote right. And we've got to win the lost and reach out to people. Yeah. And he said, oh, he's begging. Verse 47 uh, tells us that uh, uh, he heard that Jesus of Nazareth, that one, that one, that special one, that special Jesus, the, the Jesus, not a Jesus, the Jesus. And he cried out. And then verse 48, said, uh, you know, and people say, oh, now hush up. Who do you think you are? You're just an old blind beggar. You're nothing. You just, you're in poverty. You're just a beggar. You just live off of wel the welfare. Uh, I mean, you're nothing. You're nothing. You're nothing. Let me tell you something. In God's eyes, everybody's somebody. Yeah. 
Everybody is somebody. And so in verse 49, so Jesus stood still. Oh my God. Jesus stood still. He's focused on blind Bartimaeus. You see, old Bart couldn't see, but Jesus can see. Now let that sink in a minute. Where are you? What's going on in your life? What gives you great joy and what gives you sadness? What gives you sorrow? What is the dilemma? What is the crossroads? What is the attack of the enemy? What is that? I'm telling you, since September, my wife's been attacked and attacked and attacked and attacked. And, I'm th and, I, and I keep telling her. And if you're watching, I'm going to tell you again. I know she's watching. She texted me. She, she said, she says, now I heard what Jeff said. And, you know, and Gary says, now that's enough about me. Let's make it about Jesus. Amen. <laughs> that's, my, Amen. that's my wife. Amen. Let's just make it about Jesus. Now that's enough about me. God bless her heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God's, you see, the devil's coming against her. Why? Because she's got more preaching her than I do. Oh, come on. She does. She does. She's got more preaching her. She's got more the anointings on her. And the devil wants to hinder and bind and, 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 and just roadblock. But I'm telling you, greater is he that's in my wife, the Lord Jesus Christ, than he, the devil, that's in the world. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So Jesus stood still. Jesus stood still. He's looking at Bart, Bartimaeus. Jesus is looking at you. He stood still and he's looking. And then he says this, he commanded. He commanded. Now, some people don't understand this, and I want you to get this straight in your little pea-picking heart. Jesus is Almighty God. Amen. Do you hear me? That's right. Jesus is Almighty God. He's the King of kings right. and the Lord of lords. He's not a prime minister or a president or a governor. He is God Almighty. Amen. And if anyone has the right to command anything, it is Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Come on. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Now, can I tell you something else? Everyone in here is being called. That's right. And the Lord is commanding you to be called. And you need to respond to that call. He's called us to salvation. He's called us to, to water baptism. He's called us to spirit baptism. He's called us to, to uh, be generous and extravagant in our love, in our giving, and in our service. He's called us to put Him first in every area of our life. He has called us and commanded that He will be the head of your house. You know, sometimes people say, well, who's the head of your house? Well, without hesitation, I say, Jesus. Oh, I thought you were. Well, I'm after Jesus. And that doesn't mean that my wife is not my co-equal partner. You understand? You see, we're one. Do you hear what I'm saying? So we're co-equal. So Jesus is the head of my house. Jesus is the head of my house. Yeah, I'm a man. My wife's a woman. Absolutely. We're designed differently, you know. Generally speaking, men are like tackle boxes. <laughs> Everything has its compartment. Amen. Everything is put in its place. Everything is like so-so. That's why men, that's why we men don't really understand emotions very well. And we can't define them very well. And we don't, and, and so, usually, unless we're just so full of the Spirit, 
we're embarrassed by them a little bit. Do you hear what I'm saying? Whereas a woman, God made them differently. Thank God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Where a man's like a tackle box, a woman is like a cooked bowl of spaghetti that's been poured out into the colander. <laughs> Everything touches. Everything's related. Everything. They are so in touch with their emotions. They can understand those things. They can articulate them. They, it's just, you know, it's almost, yeah, it is. It's intimidating. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Sometimes I'll ask Christy, this is what has happened and this is what I kind of feel like. What's that mean? Honest to goodness. You say, why is that? It's because in the womb, when that, when that egg is fertilized by that sperm, right then and there, everything's set. Everything. Your whole DNA is right there. Everything. Your fingerprints, your eye color, your hair color, everything is right there. And at the right time in development, little boy babies' brains have a shower. There's a, there's a hormonal, some kind of chemical shower that hits our brain. And you know what it does? It divides our brain to where, you know. And, and for little girl babies, that doesn't happen. That's why they understand emotions. You know, I know exactly why God made men stronger than women. Physically. That's the only way we're stronger than a woman. If a woman was as strong as a man physically, they'd rule the world and we'd live in a doghouse. <laughs> but because men are physically stronger, that's the only thing we have on a woman. We tend to do better in mathematics, generally speaking, you know, and God made us to where we could, you know, protect and fight and be aggressive. And that's not usually like how females are. You know, women, a, a group of seven women can be together and talk at the same time. And everybody knows what everybody said. Yep. <laughs> and a man, if I'm talking to Gary and there's background noise, we got to get off of here outside your sight because I can't hear what he's saying and he can't understand what I'm trying to tell him. It's the truth, isn't it, men? That's right. Brother. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Blind Bartimaeus. He couldn't see, but he heard. Jesus saw and called. He saw and he called. And the people who were trying to hush him up now says, Hey, blind Bart, be happy. The master's calling you. And the Bible says that he threw off his garment. He said, you know what you're saying? He said, I'm getting ready to be changed. I'm getting ready to be made new. I'm getting ready. Just because I can't see, I know my God can see. Just because I know what's, what I need, kind of, I know He sees exactly what I need for sure. And can I tell you, the Lord knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly what you need. And He wants you to know that He's on your side and that He loves you, and He'll bless you, and he, he wants to make you part of His family if you're not born again, and He wants to bless you, and, and provide for you, and protect you, and all those things. That's, that's who He is. The Bible says He threw aside His garment, and what did He do? He rose, and He came to Jesus. You know, that's why we have ministry time, invitation time, after the, after the Word. 
Because we call you, if you're not saved, to rise and come to Jesus by faith. And we'll pray with you and show you from the Word how you know your sins are forgiven and you're a child of the King. And if that's never happened to you, I encourage you that that happens to you today. Being good won't take anybody to heaven. Just like my grandma said, good people go to hell. Yeah, saved people go to heaven. Did you hear what I said? Good people go. Hell's full of good people. Hell is full of good people. Good don't take you to heaven. The blood of Jesus Christ is what takes you to heaven. Amen. It's the blood. Nothing but the blood. That's what takes you to heaven. Jesus makes you really good because the Bible says there's none good, no, not one. If you're good, it's because I'm using my measurement to judge your goodness. But when God uses His measurement to judge your goodness, we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us needs Jesus and needs His cleansing, saving power. Every last one of us. So Jesus answered him, and He said, Bart, Timaeus, <laughs> what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? See, Jesus sees. Bart, Bartimaeus couldn't see, but he could hear. But today I want you to understand that Jesus can see. And he, he sees Bartimaeus, and he sees everything about him. And he says, he says, what do you want me to do for you? And that's what Jesus is saying to you. What do you really want him to do for you today? What, are your, what is your real need? Save that son or daughter. Save that husband or wife. Save that mom or dad. Heal that loved one. Give you direction about a job opportunity or a or uh, give you understanding and discernment about uh, whatever it is. Jesus is asking you, what, what do you want me to do for you? Now you say, well, Bartimaeus is blind. Why would Jesus ask him such a question? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus could see that his affliction had become who he was. He owned his limitation. Matter of fact, you know, he owned his disability. He, is, uh, he owned his, you know, that's who I am. That's who I am. Can I tell you, you have an identity beyond any limitation that's put on you. Do you hear what I'm saying? No. That limitation, that you're not limited by that whatever, whatever that is, whatever that crutch is, whatever that, that, that thing is. Your fullness, your purpose, and your completeness is not in the crutch. It's in Jesus. And he says, Bart, what do you want me to do for you? And Bart got it. He said, uh, he gave, uh, Rabbi Nye, that, that is, a, that is a, a term of great respect and honor. I mean, that's like rabbi and then some. And he says, that I might receive my sight. Whew. Hallelujah, praise God. He says, if I, if I could just receive my sight, I'm blind. I'm, I'm, I'm so helpless here. Now you think about 2,000 years ago, being blind, sitting by an old dusty road, begging. That's his life. That's his life. Now you think about it. He's out there by himself begging. What's he do when he has to go to the bathroom? What's he do when he's hungry or thirsty? What's he do? 
My goodness, the Lord has come to give him such a higher quality of life, and he's come to give you a higher quality of life. He said, Lord, I want to be able to see. I, I want to see like you can see. <laughs> and here's what Jesus said. Go. Now, he didn't lay hands and scream and squall and, 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 and dump a, a two-gallon of oil on him. He didn't do all that. The Bible, now, there's places for all that. Don't misunderstand me. But what did Jesus do? He listened to his declaration of faith. Remember, he said, Son of David, have mercy on me. Whoop, he identified him as the right one. And Jesus said, stood still and commanded him to come. He responded, threw off that old coat, that old garment, and made his way to Jesus. And then Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do? And he says, I want to see. Now, how do you fit into that picture? Where are you sitting? What are you clothed in? Who are you addressing? Are you responding by coming? And are you making known your request? A lot of people sit down, oh, I never hear from God. Well, you never ask Him anything. Oh, I, I want to I wanna have dreams and visions. Well, read the Word of God. Amen. I, I want to I hear the voice of God. Well, if it, can I tell you, one of the ways God talks is through His Word. I got, a, I, I, had a, I, I got a word, I got a message from the Lord for somebody in another country. And I could just see it as clear as day. That, 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 that Diablos was just like a laser pouring into his eyes trying to defeat him. And then the next scene, there was someone, a dark figure, coming in his house. And when I saw his house, I knew exactly who this was for. And then I saw a hangman's noose. And when that happened, I mean, it was no time. I was calling him up in this foreign country. And I'm telling him what I saw. And he just breaks down and wails and weeps. He said, you hit all three of them right on the money. I said, well, God hit him. I said, I just had to be brave, brave enough to obey God and make the phone call. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Say, I want God to speak to me. Well, speak to God. Come on. Read his Bible. Come faithfully to the house of God. Faithfully pray. You know we gather here at 9 every Sunday morning for a 20-minute prayer meeting. I encourage you to try it. Check it out. We had 27 here this morning. Yay, God. You say, well, that's, that's, church don't start till 1030. We have Bible study at 930. 930, 1015. It won't kill you. 45 minutes are going that quick. Come on. I want to hear from God. Well, He wants to hear from you. What do you want me to do, Bart? I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. I saw the other day, I, I, I saw uh, somebody sent me this YouTube thing and, and this family bought grandpa, daddy and grandpa, these glasses that help colorblind people see color. And the, he's sitting there and he got this, bat, you know, and the, and the, the wife and some daughters and grandkids and some sons and son. I don't know who's the son and son-in-law, I don't know, but there's plenty there. 
and he uh, he's opening it up, you know, big old box and then a little box, and he opens it up, and then there's the case, and he opens that up, and and the, and they're in plastic, so he opens that up, and he says, sunglasses. And, and he, his daughter says, well, Dad, just put it on and see how it changes how you see things. And he put those sunglasses on and his mouth, and then he just started weeping. You see, he saw red for the first time and blue and green because everything was gray, black, and, 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 and a fuzzy something, he said. And he just wept. And he put them on and, and, he, and he said, Dad, look at your, your cap. He took his cap off and it was a real bold royal blue. And he said, oh my Lord. <laughs> you know? And he put it back on. And he's just looking around. And just overwhelmed at the handiwork of God and all the beautiful spectrum. He received his sight. God wants to open your eyes that way. Amen. Your eyes are closed to some things. Your mind's closed. Your heart's closed to some things that God wants to show you. And you're, you're either too fearful or too proud to allow God to be God in your life the way He wants to be. What did Jesus say to Bartimaeus when He says, I want to see! And He says, go. He says, go. Your what? Faith. Not your goodness. Not your performance, not, you, not your doing this or not doing that, but your faith has made you well. Now, it's not faith in faith, it's faith in Jesus. Amen. In the promises of God, in the power of God, in the person of God. You see, that's why it's so important. That's why so many denominations are trying to undermine the fundamentals of the Christian faith. The deity of Christ. You see, if you can, under, if you can undermine the deity of Christ, Jesus is God, like a lot of these mainline denominations have done for years, and their seminaries aren't turning out pastors, they're turning out apostates. And, and so, so if you don't believe Jesus is God, He's not going to answer any prayer for you. He's just a man like you and me. Uh, he's a person like you and me. If you underestimate, if you deny the inspiration of Scripture, that the Bible is a God-breathed book from the Holy One, Amen. Amen. then you just, you can pick and choose. Well, I don't like that. You know, like this new, like, you know, that, that God wants to save everybody in the LGBTQ plus crowd. And I'm not sure what all that means. But I know God loves them all. But you see, they want to undermine the scripture. They want to take out Romans chapter 1. They want to take out 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Why? Because it speaks to the LGBTQ plus crowd with great, great power. Friends, I'm telling you, the Lord will save everybody if they will repent and believe. Amen. You got to repent and believe. And if you don't repent, you're not really believed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Bartimaeus couldn't see, but Jesus could see. He can see. He'll direct your paths. He'll direct you. He'll meet your need. If you want to honor God, if you want to be used by God, if you want to be a blessing, if you want to, if you want to be fruitful in the hands of God, He's standing still and He's commanded. 
He's calling for surrender. What area of life are you unwilling to let go? For a lot of people, it's just a simple matter of tithing. For a lot of people, it's a simple matter of reading your Bible. For a lot of people, it's just a simple matter of being faithful to the house of God. Don't, you know, I believe the Lord wants us to get to the point where we come in here that, I mean, we're, we're ready Man, I'm, I've been praying for the service. I'm ready. I'm ready. And boy, I tell you, we start worshiping the Lord. And before you know it, you're just allowed just to dance for the Lord like nobody's looking. Because you don't care. Do you hear what I'm saying? Say, oh my goodness, I, I'm too reserved for that. No, you're just too proud. Oh! Listen, I was, raised, I was raised at Newton Missionary Baptist Church. Baptist. Big B Baptist. And you know where I first saw people worshiping the Lord with banners? At Newton Baptist Church. Newton Baptist Church. It was all those blue-haired ladies. You know what blue hairs are, don't you? And boy, the choir would be a singing and they'd be a shouting and all of a sudden, boy, them women would just start doing the Baptist two-step. And then next thing you know, boy, them hankies would be coming out and just praising the Lord, saying, Woo, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name. And this was in the 50s. Poor Baptist got so stuck up and refined. I know because I, I was one. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Whew, thought I'd put you all asleep there for a minute. <laughs> what do you need made well this morning? We just touched down on the runway music people. What do you need made well? What do you need to let go of? What do you need to tell, just to come clean and be honest with the Lord about? What is it you need from Jesus? Is there something that you can't see? He can see. And He's standing still and He's looking right at you. And He's commanding you to come. If you're not saved, He's commanding you to be saved. If you're not been water baptized like Jesus was, he's calling you to baptism. You need a church home, he's calling you. You need to come and get serious and get in with both feet. You need, if it's your area uh, in your finances, you need to come and confess it to him and make that decision that I'm going to do the right thing. Maybe you need to start participating more in missions. Maybe you, next time I go somewhere, you need to go to. You need to come. He's calling you and commanding you to come. There's people here that need healed. You need to come. We'll pray for you. We'll anoint you with oil. We'll obey the Scripture. You need to come. You can't see, but Jesus can. Will you exercise the measure of faith that He's given you for this very moment, for this very thing? It's all up to you. Let's stand our feet.